Hello everyone. Um, today we're taking a look at the Biorec reaction. So the Biorec reaction is basically a test for proteins. Um, basically the way you do the Biorec test is you take some of your uh, favorite source of protein, in this case it's a milk, and by that I mean actual cow's milk and not some vegan garbage. Um, and you basify it with some dilute sodium hydroxide solution. This is 1% sodium hydroxide. Just kind of basifying that. And then you just add some copper sulfate solution to it. And get in there. And it will change color to this very nice purple. And that a positive result that means that you have uh, proteins in solution which shouldn't come to be a surprise with milk so yeah that test works pretty well um, now you might be thinking what exactly does this reaction have to do with uh, biorette the thing is that Biorette also gives a positive result for this test. So if I just put some sodium hydroxide solution in here uh, once again, and this time I add a bit of my Biorette instead of milk. You know, just kind of dissolve that. And to this I also add some copper sulfate solution um, and we should see some complex forming as well yeah there's that characteristic purple color once again basically what's happening is some of the nitrogens in the protein are coordinating to the copper and forming this uh, purple complex. For the biorette it's pretty similar. Uh, from what I've read it's those two outer nitrogens like this one and this one that coordinate to it. Although it might also be this inner one. I don't, I don't really know. But anyways um, I have a bunch of pretty pure biorette so I'm gonna try to isolate this complex. Maybe get some nice purple crystals or something. I found this paper from 1967. God bless you, 1960s. And it has a bunch of really useful information about these uh, biorec complexes. And there's some procedures in here. Yeah, they, I think there's... Yeah, that's the one for the copper. Um, yeah, they use potassium hydroxide, but I'm going to substitute that for sodium hydroxide. And also, I, th I don't really know if I'm going to use ethanol or just water. Also, I'm going to scale that procedure up by a factor of two. And I'm going to use copper sulfate instead of copper chloride, because I don't have any copper chloride. Seems like we fucking cooked that complex. Uh, this turned into what? Copper oxide, probably. 
all this black stuff in there. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm gonna have to start all over again because I'm not gonna get too much yield out of that. So this time I actually got some product. It's this very nice uh, shade of purple. I think it's still pretty impure because it might have like sodium sulfate or whatever in it. But I didn't bother recrystallizing it because well it degrades under heat at something like 70 degrees Celsius and upwards. And yeah, just didn't want to do that. And it's good enough as is. I don't really have a purpose for it. Um, yeah, the yield is not so great because, well, first off, I had to pull that piece of filter paper out from that filter funnel and use the funnel directly. Um, because it seems that like this complex is like a very good uh, Schweitzer's reagent. It dissolves cellulose and it turned that filter paper into like slimy whatever I don't know um, and so I had to take that out because because it was just disintegrating and yeah I lost a bit of product that way uh, I got about two grams of product and I started with four grams of pyrite and what three grams of copper sulfate or something um, and I only got two grams of product so I definitely lost something somewhere but hey I got something so yeah that's basically it for today um, and till the next one